Sire, I have more news. Um, yes. Well, it seems that the fighting has gone Enough. exactly as you... I would like to know what you intend to accomplish, Father. Should we not be fighting the Darkspawn instead of each other? The nobility should be brought into line and then the Darkspawn defeated. This is no true blight, Honora. Only Kalen's vanity demanded it be so. Beg pardon, sire. But blight or no, we may not have the manpower to face the Darkspawn soon. Kalen approached your legions for support, did he not? Never! Marek and I drove those bastards out! Not roll out the welcome for the now. We need help, Father. We cannot deal with this crisis alone. Ferelden will stand on its own. I will lead it through this, Anora. You must have faith in me. Did you kill Kalen? Kalen's death was his own doing. I do not understand what a golem is. Why would anyone create such a being? Why would one create a sword? To strike at its enemies. But you are no sword golem. You speak like a living creature, but act like a possession. I do not know what to make of you. I am no possession. Not now that the control rod is broken. No, it is still in your heart. Do you even realize this? Age by age have men stood up and said to the world, from what has come before me, I was forged, but I am new and greater than my forebears. And so each man walks the world in ruin, abandoned and untried, less than the whole of his being. It is a riddle. <sighs> it seems so. Orzammar lies this way, no? They make golems in such a place, do they not? All the Darkspawn are fleeing the underground, and we are going there. Look at all these people hawking their wares. It's almost like a little city. Step right. Make us breath. Oh, beg your pardon, friend. You, uh, startled me a bit. You've, uh, heard of me? Where is my sword? I, uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. I, I don't have it. I swear by Andraste's knickers. I sold it on the way here. A dwarf near Redcliffe. Dwin, I think his name was. I don't rightly know. He said he was a collector. It's none of my business what a person wants with my merchandise once it's changed hands. We'll see. Well, little of this, little of that. You know, uh, used armor mostly. Nothing uh, that would really interest fine people like yourselves. Is it refreshing or unsettling that this merchant is reluctant to show us his wares? Well, I'm considerate of my customer's time, that's all. What reassuring certainty. Good. I mean, come back any time. Do 
you miss the life you once had, Shell? These centuries of memories you have lost. Does it miss being within its mother's womb? Do I... Well, no. I don't remember that far back. It is no different. My memory stretches only so far, and what went before is now lost. And you remember nothing at all? Not even a little bit? There are images. Faces who I have no names for. Places I remember being, but not where they are. Do I miss these things? They are without context. I feel only disquiet when I think of them. Like dreams, then. When you awake, all the details have fled. Is that what it is to dream? Then yes, perhaps it is like that. How very sad. To discover your entire life has been a forgotten dream. I am so sorry. What do you estimate are the chances of success, Konari? For the Grey Warden, little to none. So why does it follow? I do not risk death, but it does. My mission is no different from the Grey Wardens. I must see this through to the end. It would rather perish than give up its quest. Indeed. There is honor to be salvaged in such a quest, no matter its chances. Honor is a curious thing. It is far better to be practical. What use is practicality when it leads to cowardice and emptiness? It is better to live well than to live. An uh, interesting theory. There is worth in your life, Shale. There is value, but only if it is used. Oh, you wish to talk to me? Truly, it's a courtesy for one so well-armed to notice a lowly merchant. Someone has to. Trade with other races can dry up. We surfacers are Orzammar's lifeline, even if we're denied a cast. The Assembly says we've turned our back on the stone, but they still use the goods we bring. Hypocrites. That's not right. Someone should do something. Maybe it'll change by the time my children are grown. Twice a year, I'm confined to a trade stall in the commons, but I see enough. It's very closed in. My grandfather says I've lost my stone sense. I was born topside. I don't remember having it. Best of luck to you. Liliana, what do you want from me? Nothing. I'm just curious. There's a lot we don't know about you, Sten. Except that you're a big softie. Please stop saying that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of you. There's nothing wrong with having a heart, Sten. It's just not what I expected. Why? You're so canary. All the stories speak as if you were a hurricane or an earthquake rather than people. Kunari are most dangerous because we are thinking men and not an unthinking force. I don't understand. What do you mean? For your sake, I hope you never find out. Go celebrate or whatever you have to do. Now, why would you be interested in that? It's mine. <sighs> you know, Farron didn't mention the giant he took it from was alive. Excellent idea. It's in my strong box. Here's the key. Now, why don't you leave me alone? I have heard an interesting tale of the Kunari. Speak, Kunari. I am told that the Kunari put mages on leashes. Leashes! What a delightful concept. It is not something that one should take pleasure in. It is done because it is necessary. Why not put them out of their misery? Crush their skulls and be done with it. Fast, efficient, fun. You have been offended by such men, so your bloodlust can be forgiven. But these ones you speak of are to be pitied. Even so, they must serve just as any other must serve. 
All must find their place within the Kyun. Does sound like a delightful place where it comes from. Mages on leashes. What will they think of next? I cannot say that they would not wish to put a leash on you as well, Kadan. Hmm. That does sound less fun. Yes. I have been studying Mother's Grimoire. Do you wish to hear what I have found? Tis not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. Disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. Not unless one also happens to be an ancient abomination. No. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. Once, Flemeth was a mage. This was before the time of the Circle of Magi, but she wielded magical power of the same sort that all the ancient shamans did. It was no different. She summoned a demon and made it part of her, and became an abomination, one that has thrived. Whether Flemeth has always been the demon, or mastered it, or they are one, I truly do not know. No matter what she is, her body still ages and will not sustain her forever. So she must find new bodies. I am to be the next new body in a very long line. I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. Indeed, that is primarily what this tome details. The various daughters that Flemeth has acquired, their preparation and training. I recognize all of it. I and to be her next host. This is my purpose. Whatever spark of the demon that made her what she is remains within her, keeps her from dying of old age, but her body deteriorates. Eventually, she would be so wizened as to be senseless and immobile. So, she must seek a new body, a fresh body, and start the cycle anew. I am uncertain. According to her writings, certain hosts are better than others. The more a host is prepared, the quicker the transition will be. I am sorry. This simply takes me by surprise. I would have thought I would have had some inkling, some notion. Flemeth is capable of many things. I was a fool not to suspect her capable of using me for her own self-preservation. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. 
I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. It may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I. Because if she is slain while I am near, I am not certain that she will not simply be able to take possession of me right there. So obviously I cannot be the one to do it. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari wilds without me. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. She would like everyone to think she is invincible, but I highly doubt that is the case. And besides that, you are not truly killing her. Not really, but the sooner the better, no? I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. Strange. I had almost forgotten it. Completion. Are you sure you are a Grey Warden? I think you must be an Ashkari to find a single lost blade in a country at war. I will return to the Arishok with my report. But it would be a much more thorough and satisfying answer to his question if the blight were ended first. Don't you agree? I am one of the Beresad. I have never abandoned the field with a battle unmet. Yes, it isn't every Grey Warden who has her own Beresad. I will see you reach the Archdemon. Lead the way. Yes, it is good to have my sword at my side again. I call her Asala, the soul, my soul. She is forged from rare blue steel and has served me faithfully for many years. Yes, you understand what it is like to have a weapon that is part of you. Few others do. You're quite taken with each other, aren't you? It's hard not to notice the doe-eyed looks he gives you, especially when he thinks no one's watching. It's almost too sweet for my tastes, and I'm an old lady who should be making lace hearts and fuzzy blankets with animal motifs. No, I won't be making socks with pom-poms for you anytime soon, but that's hardly my point. I've noticed your blossoming relationship, and I wanted to ask you where you thought it was going. Alistair is a fine lad, skilled in battle, but quite inexperienced when it comes to affairs of the heart. I would hate to see him get hurt. Not intentionally, no. But there is great potential for tragedy here, for one or both of you. You are both Grey Wardens, and he is the son of a king. You have responsibilities which supersede your personal desires. Love is ultimately selfish. 
It demands that one be devoted to a single person who may fully occupy one's mind and heart to the exclusion of all else. A Grey Warden cannot afford to be selfish. You may be forced to make a choice between saving your love and saving everyone else. And then what would you do? Nothing is certain. Not in these times. You cannot take anything for granted. I want you to be aware of this. I am just trying to minimize the suffering that may come to either of you. I have given my advice. Do with it what you will. So I am led to understand that the sister is a follower of this maker. Am I the sister? Oh, that's so cute. It's like you're my big brother. Or sister. Or whatever. I am a creature of stone. I rather doubt that we would be related in any shape or form. Oh, I didn't mean literally. Don't you think that people can be related in spirit? I notice that humans tend to believe in a great number of things that are not true, even when given evidence to the contrary. Believing in things when there is no proof is what faith is all about, Shale. Believing in things when there is no proof is what gullibility is all about. So I am gullible now. I uh, take it we are no longer sisters in spirit. Gain will not suffer the delay of his appointed messenger. Vieta, this land is held in trust for the sovereign dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the king's wiper. Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. They hide because they are dwarves. I would challenge any race to fare as well. Our king is dead. Endron I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago. The assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, we risk a civil war. Wait, who are you to speak for Ferelden? You're no messenger to Loghain. That's for certain. Thank the ancestors. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden. They're sworn enemies of King Loghain. Well, that is the Royal Seal. That means only the Assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. You're letting in a traitor? And a foreigner? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden. What? Lies and slander! King Loghain will not suffer this. I will not suffer it. I'm his messenger. Kill each other as you will, but take your sodding fight off my doorstep. Why does the bard stare at me so? I was thinking of writing a song about you. The statue with a heart of gold. Or something like that. It thinks my heart is made of gold. It is stone as anything else. Cold stone. I meant that you had a good heart. It seems to me that you do. And they call this having a heart of gold. Why? Um. Because gold is precious and shiny, and, and a good heart is just as valuable. Shiny. In a manner of speaking. My heart does not qualify as shiny. I kill, frequently, and not without pleasure. You have had a difficult life, 
Deep down at the center of your being, you are a good person. I believe that. Even though I have never demonstrated this aspect? How peculiar. You aren't all stone shell. There is a person inside of you. If so, it is because I ate him. You've done me a service. That fool Imrek was barking for a week. Are all humans so touched? You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find. A trust follow, Warden. Your arrival is a mixed blessing. We prefer that outsiders not witness our infighting, but your presence will be tolerated. Fair journeys, Warden. Something I can help with? Vast holes carved from the stone of the mountain, lined with the chiseled marble figures of paragons, so fine as to mirror life itself. Soaring ceilings grand enough to make any man forget the sky and the sun, and to question the reason for their existence. I have heard of these things and more, but none prepared me for what I have seen here. It is marvelous. Imagine if all of those were golems. Is it just me, or do all these statues look alike? Do you think well, this are miniatures of these in the city? Daughter. If you were Carla Blanca, all my mentor will know your name. Mother, I don't want to be like her. She... Don't say that. Not to me, not to anyone. Now get back to the forge. I want to see more details. Yes, Mother. Show respect, Surfacer. You're in the Hall of Heroes, home to the best of us. Paragons, dwarves who achieve such greatness, they're considered ancestors even if they yet walk among us. If only we had one now. A unifier. A voice like that, there would be no dissension. Perhaps I don't want you to. A Surfacer should not see us in this kind of disarray. Goodbye, Warden. I hope you're not needed. I, uh, may have a cause to apologize to the sister. Apologize? For what? For suggesting that the sister was gullible for believing in things which were not real. Oh, that! I'd already forgotten about that. Thank you for reminding me. I suppose it would offer some comfort to believe that things occur according to some grand purpose. All those years I spent in Honleith, unable to move, it would be comforting to think there was some reason for it. Do you know there wasn't? Perhaps the Maker did it to bring you here, to us. You once said that you had no purpose. Perhaps you are simply looking for it in the wrong place. Perhaps. I shall think on this. It is the Assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or as now, when someone tries using the Assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Harrowmont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew! Handlers, separate these dashers in the Diamond Quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. Not speak that way about the man who should be king! I won't have fighting in the commons, especially in front of outsiders. You'll all have him in the Legion. Vieta, Surfacer. I'm bid to let you walk the commons, but keep your place. Warden or not, I want order. 
surface problems. Well, we have no king to hear you. You can join the shouting at the assembly in the Diamond Quarter if you want. Bunch of Desher lords bickering over sand, Balin, Aromont. Is one so different? No paragons here. Surfacers appoint no paragons? Truly, you're lost in all that sky. They are the best of us, declared living ancestors. If you must be our warden, at least know us. Go to the Shaper of Memories in the Shaperet, the true bright spot in the Diamond Quarter. See, that's why I don't want you surfacers seeing our worst. You'll think that's all we are. The market is thin, but busy, and the tavern never closes. Bad blood is usually kept to the proving. Should toss Balin and Harrowmont in there. Sort this all out in a hurry. Personal battles for honor and ancestor. I don't expect a surfacer to understand. If you must be our warden, at least know us. Go to the Shaper of Memories in the Shaperet. The true bright spot in the Diamond Quarter. They've caged themselves for fear of each other. As you've seen, keeping order down among us working people is dodgy. No place for a proper lord. Balin speaks through his second, Vartag Gavorn in the assembly. Lord Harrowmont speaks through Doolin Ferender from his estate. Yes, you should. It's big. Hmm. Not bad. Lava bad. Don't go near the lava. I have never heard of a thing called a Kunari. Then you have not been listening. We did not row to shore last year. We have been about for centuries. I have listened. I have done little else, in fact. And yet I do not remember anyone mentioning such a Kunari in all my years in the village. Relying on humans as a source of education is a fool's errand. They are rather ignorant, aren't they? And feeble, at the best of times. We have creatures on Parvolan that are similar. The humans call them monkeys. They are dull, cowardly vermin. They cry out shrilly when threatened and throw their own feces. That is an excellent comparison. I wonder if they're related. Possibly. Did you see that? I cannot believe what this city has come to. This would never have happened when Endrin was alive. Aye. What a terrible burden for a father to have only Balin left of three fine sons. In the end, Endrin himself recognized that Balin cared for nothing but power. It was Endrin who ordered his son away from his deathbed and embraced Lord Harrowmont as his heir. Lord Harrowmont should be our king. He was King Endrin's closest advisor, the only one he could trust. Endrin himself, ancestors welcome him, asked the assembly to endorse Harrowmont. The city is torn apart. King Endrin is dead and the assembly can't decide who takes the throne. Lord Harrowmont or that monster Balin. Everybody knows he killed his brother Trian and let his father's favorite son take the blame. And many question whether Endrin died a bed, as we were told, or whether Balin helped him along. He is a good man, and a skilled general. King Endrin trusted him with his life, and I will do no less. I am Narav Helmi, third daughter of the second matron of House Helmi. And you, stranger, what brings you to Orzammar at such a time? A blight? Now? But our warriors are killing each other in the streets. Who will lead the battle? How will we survive? Then may the ancestors guide your efforts. If you seek Lord Harrowmont's support, talk to Doolin Ferender. You'll find him in Harrowmont's estate. Tell him who you are, and I'm sure he can get you an audience. I should return home until the streets become safe again. I have thought about what the sisters said. Our last talk? 
And? I would like the sister to explain to me the purpose of birds. Birds? What kind of birds? Any kind. The evil little demons that strafe the ground with their droppings. What reason could your maker have for such things? The same he has for any evil, such as the darkspawn, if one were to equate the two. I have a difficult time believing in any higher power that would inflict evil upon the world. Does it enjoy such jests? Perhaps there is a lesson to learn in it. Not all lessons are easy, Shell. Hmm. It's any wonder this maker has so many followers. I mean, birds. What was he thinking? You look like you're not from around here. Oh, wonderful! I've been trying forever to find someone who really knows the surface world. I, I don't suppose you've heard of something called the Circle? I've been trying to reach someone there for years. I've sent missives with every caravan, but I never get a reply. I want to know if they would accept me for study. No dwarf has ever studied at the Circle of Magi. I guess you never read First Enchanter Caitlin's treatise concerning dwarfs and the non-heritability of magic. He tested dwarfs from 20 bloodlines and found they couldn't perform any level of spell casting, regardless of lyrium exposure or time on the surface. The Circle speculates that lyrium in the stone shields us from spiritual influences and over time made us immune to them. I want to go to the Circle to study. I don't want to do magic. No dwarf can cast spells, but I don't see why I shouldn't study it. It would be a valuable exchange. Orzammar would learn of one of the great natural forces of the surface. And the circle gains direct access to our knowledge of lyrium smithing. That would be wonderful. My name is Dagna, daughter of Janar of the Smithcast. Tell them I've already begun reading the Taventer Imperiums for Tikum Kadab, and it's just fascinating. Did you know the Imperial Magister Lords once had genealogies of every human family known to produce a mage child? She's so enthusiastic and adorable. I'm glad we're helping her. <gasps> oh, I'll go pack my bags right now. I'll be waiting by my father's shop. Why would such a small people build things so tall? They must own an impressive array of ladders. <laughs> At least there are no pigeons here. Hey, what's down there? What's this? A human? Can we make these tunnels tall enough for humans? I'm sorry, but I cannot allow you past the front lines without Adesha's permission. And I've heard nothing of any new patrols scheduled to leave today. Don't let the calm fool you. The Darkspawn are down there, aren't they, Commander? Either we finally have the edge, which I doubt, or the beasts are building up numbers for the next attack. The surface? But I thought the vermin never went up that far except to... Except during blights. Ancestors save us if that's what's happening. Of course not. Down here you're bound to run into giant spiders, deep stalkers, and other vermin. Ugly beasts they are. Walk on two legs, but they have the head of a worm, and hunt in packs. Watch out. They're not afraid to take on a group their own size. A few outposts. Legion of the Dead, mostly. Fools that they are. Some scavenger types, too. It's an independent company of soldiers. They accept no command but their own. Anyone who can bear arms can join, no matter his crimes, <laughs> or sanity. They hold a funeral when they join, and swear their only goal is a glorious death. Into the deep roads? Not without a full unit of soldiers to back you, my friend. Or a Desher's permission to risk yourself. Orzammar can't afford to lose its citizens or honored guests on casual visits to the deeps. I, for your sake, I hope you've no reason to come here again. I'm sorry. 
Did you have an offering for the ancestors? Although, I can't imagine your ancestors reside in the stone. My name is Vilda, widow of Turok of the Smith Cast. I pray here every day for my son, Ruck. I only wish I knew whether I should be asking for his safe return, or for the ancestors to accept his soul. It was five years ago. He was only a youngster. He joined a Deep Roads excursion, the only smith to go with the warriors to repair their arms. He was so proud, but he got separated somehow. When they came home, he wasn't with them. The captains don't want to lose anyone searching for stray men. Too many were taken by Dark Spawn that way. The Deep Roads are where Dark Spawn come from. They descend for miles into the earth, and we must patrol them constantly or be overrun. I lost my husband to them. If I lost my son the same way... How? There is no way except to brave the deep roads yourself. A warden? So you could do it. Only wardens face the deep roads without a company packing them. Oh, thank you. The ancestors finally heed my prayers. Please, find me as soon as you return. I have thought a little more about the sister's maker. He's not just my maker, Shale. He's your maker, too. He created everything. I don't know who made me, but I doubt it was him. I think you're wrong. The important part of you, that part which makes you, you, he made that. And the sister simply believes this, even though there is no proof? I do. And the sister still believes that she and I could be sisters, in spirit? I do. I think that would be nice. I suppose there are worse things that could happen, like being assaulted by a flock of pigeons. I'm glad to hear it. Maker's blessing on you, sister. I'm Brother Burkle of the Red Cliff Chantry, returned to my ancestors' land to spread the chant of light. I'm petitioning to open a chantry in Orzammar. There is... resistance. It's obvious the world wasn't created by the mortal souls who dwelt within it. But Orzammar persists in worshipping its paragons and forefathers instead of the Maker. <laughs> Let them worship whatever they like. The Kun is the only way to enlightenment. Perhaps each must find his own way to the truth. Are you saying you will help? Do you have any influence with the Shaper of Memories? The Shaper, it controls changes in Orzammar's structure and society. I need the Shaper of Memory's permission to open a prayer meeting. The Shaper of Memories controls the Shaper of Orzammar's record system. Like the Chantry's historians, but, but more thorough. They track the births and lineage of every dwarf born in the city, every property sale, death in battle, marriage, or divorce. The Shaperette is in the prime tier of the city, near the royal estate. Does this mean you're, you will help me then? I can see the Maker's hand on your shoulder, guiding you always. If this Chantry could help just one person as much as it helped me, it's worth any trouble. Please, let me know as soon as you've heard anything. The sister has interesting footwear. Oh. You like shoes, do you? My mass is considerable. Some cushioning on my feet would be ideal, but I doubt such footwear could be made. Mm, I could see some nice thick sandals being made, with very thick leather straps. Oh yes, that could be done. Perhaps we could find some cobbler who could give it a try. What color would you want? Surely the color is unimportant. In fact, the color is very important. 
That, and picking a shape that makes your ankles look slender. And you could use some help there, I fear. I have thick ankles. It's all right. I don't like my thighs. What's important is working with what you have. Hmm. Very well. I wish my shoes to be red. Oh, bold choice. We'll have to remember that. Higher class of midget lives here, I'll wager. From what I've heard of dwarven politics, I'm almost surprised we haven't seen blood running these streets. You have come at a difficult time. Orzammar is ailing for want of a king. News of the hour! Is Lord Balin considering a dissolution of the ancient clans? He refuses to comment in the assembly. I just get paid to speak the truth. If you have an issue, speak to my employer. The Legion of the Dead Warriors secretly wear Prince Balin's colors. Our prince has Orzammar's deadliest warriors behind him. Such big houses they have. Yes, very nice. Where are the Darkspawn? You know, after all this is over, I wouldn't mind getting a job here. I could sing, tell stories, help the king get items from high shelves. I suppose that building the city in the midst of a pool of molten rock saves invaders the trouble of burning it. Even I could shatter from this height, surely. I require a moment of silence to take in this magnificent sight. Warden, it is always a blessing for Orzammar to host your order. I am Vartag Gavorn, top advisor to our good Prince Balin. What news do you bring? It would be hard not to notice the Grey Warden and her eclectic entourage. I hear you seek the aid of Orzammar's finest. Yes, the treaty. I've seen it in the Shaper's libraries. Now, the difficulty is that the treaty only compels our king, and we are sadly lacking one of those right now. My prince is the rightful king, but a disappointing number of lords back the upstart Haramond for the throne. If you show your support for Prince Balin, he might be able to assist with your requests. You must understand, Haramont hides behind his good reputation while sending spies and assassins. Balin can't know who to trust. It's been like a knife in the heart for Balin to see so many of his father's men stand with the usurper. That hurts worst of all. That Haramont would take advantage of the dying king's delirium to plant such poisonous suspicions against his own son. After that, you understand why Balin cannot trust the word of a stranger, however reputable that stranger might be. Haramont has engaged in a campaign of bribery and coercion to ensure that every house serves him. But if a neutral party, a stranger, were to approach certain key members, perhaps with irrefutable evidence of Haramont's deception, I'm certain my Lord Prince would show his gratitude. Haramont promised the same portion of his estate to two different Deshers, Lady Dace and Lord Helmy. Haramont can't possibly grant it to both of them, but they won't find out until after the vote is cast. I have copies of the promissory notes Haramont gave each of them. Once they see those, they should both reconsider their votes. That's not important. If they ask, say you found them while searching the Shaper's libraries for your tree. Normally, the Shapers would handle this sort of accusation, 
They are the scholars who manage our laws, histories, and genealogies. They are the final arbiters of all disputes in Orzammar. Unfortunately, the Shaper of Memories is the most important among them, and his grandfather was Lord Haramont's aunt's first cousin. Obviously, we cannot expect him to offer an unbiased opinion. I guess I can't expect you surfacers to understand the importance of family in Orzammar. The Shaper is biased, and if you want Prince Balin's help, you'll have to show where your loyalties lie. Will you do it? Don't expect this offer to last. If my prince hears you swore allegiance to his enemy, he won't be so friendly next time. I will be here if you change your mind. I've heard stories about the Kunari, you know. Oh? They conquered nearly all of the north. Tevinta, Ravane, and Tiva. Much of the land was laid waste. In the northern kingdoms, they say the Kunari are implacable, relentless, more like a landslide than an invasion. It took three exalted marches to drive them back to the sea. We'll do better next time. The assembly is in session. Enter quietly if you wish to observe. Your mind has gone to dust if you think we would pass such a writ. Half our houses would go broke without the surface trade. The proposal is only effective until we have a king to ensure we are respected by the surfacers. Leaving you conveniently positioned to take over all contracts. I'll see your head on a pike first. Deshers, lords and ladies of the assembly. I've already doubled the guard to prevent violence. Must I summon more? Steward Bandalore. Balin's sympathizers are tying our hands with trivialities. They may as well open us to the sky. I suggest we put the matter to a vote. And I suggest you have a taste of my family's mace. Enough. The assembly is in recess until the members can regain control of their emotions. Stone-forsaken fools and dusters. I'm sorry. This is the assembly of the clan. Only dashers and occasional guests of state are allowed in. Forgive me. I am so exhausted. I completely forgot about the message from the gate guard. Welcome to Orzammar, Warden. I hope you can forgive our unrest. The loss of our king has hit us hard. Respect for your role is great. But you won't receive a proper hearing until we have a king on the throne. troubling, but it will still seem distant compared to the empty throne. The assembly is blind to all else. This is their world, and it ended when Endrin died. Dulin for Endrin, Harriman's man, can be found at the Harriman's estate. Varteg Gavorn, Prince Balin's second, is often here in the assembly. I only wish there was more I could do for you.